Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Giving all honor, praise, respect, glory, and allegiance to the God of our forefathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Israel. We all must say hallelujah. hallelujah. You may be seated, brothers and sisters. Thank you, the Most High God, for my life, the lives of my family, the lives of my loved ones, the lives of Kobe Israel, all those that are striving to do that which is right and pleasing in his eyesight. I thank the Most High God for the time that he gave my father, Cohen Levy. Hallelujah. Thank the Most High God for all the people that are here, all the leadership. And I pray that the Most High God will bless us and keep us. And that we will even continue to maintain this uh, good spirit this day. This is a good day. It's a Shabbat day. Okay. The Most High God allowed us to be here alive and well. I hope y'all all feel as happy as I do because I'm happy to be here. Amen. It's not like our jobs and stuff. You know, you wake up in the morning, you like, oh, I don't want to go to work. But here... You gotta feel good about being here. I'm happy to see our faces. I'm happy to see everybody here. And I thank the Most High God for all things and everything. The little things that count, brothers and sisters. The, the coming together on a shot by day to be able to have some egg salad and bacalao. To be able to have a nice drink. To be able to have some breakfast. To be able to fellowship with your brothers and sisters. These are the things that are blessings, brothers and sisters. A lot of people don't have the opportunity to come together and eat with their family. And to even eat, period. So we thank the Most High God for all these things. Brothers and sisters, the afternoon portion for the, after, for the day is going to be 1 Samuel, the 16th chapter. I'm going to do the 16th and 17th chapter. And I pray that I make it interesting for y'all because it's our history, brothers and sisters. You know, King David, as, we about to, as he's about to be introduced to us, he was a mighty man of God. Yes, man. A mighty man of God from the house of Judah. But not only was he a mighty man of God, but he was a musician. He was a psalmist. He wrote songs to God. That's right, that's right. You see, sometimes we get in this mode where we think oh, we got to stand still and be tough. Because they singing. We don't want to give up that, that praise. David was tougher than all of us. That's right. The toughest of all of us. And he danced out his clothes. Yes, <laughs> praising God. Yes, he did. You ain't that tough. You're not that tough if you can't give God praise. Don't ever sit there and think, oh, no, nah, I don't want to look uncool. How could you look uncool praising God? How could you not look fresh praising God? You can't tough diddy bop to God. You can't tough diddy bop to God. You think of Millie Rock? David been Millie Rocking before all of us. It was called the David Rock back then. We just didn't know it, brothers and sisters. They said lean back. David been doing all of that stuff. The running man. Listen, Ecclesiastes tell us there's nothing new under the sun. So you don't think they was doing this back in the days? The running man? Huh? This one? Oh! They was doing all of those things. The snake? The snake probably started in back in the wilderness. Uh, they said, look at that snake move. Oh, oh. Do that knockout. Huh? Do that knockout. Hey, hey, hey. Huh? The moonwalk. They've been moonwalking. Our people are great, brothers and sisters. So when we talk about our history, remember who you are. We were kings and queens. Don't let them tell you anything else. The predicament that we're in now, we don't see ourselves as kings and queens, but we gotta rise above that. We gotta come back to our natural state, which is kings and queens, the children of God. Amen. When we sing, we sound good. We might not be able to sing individually. Okay. I can't sing. But if I sing with y'all, I sound good. If I sing with y'all, I sound good. We sing together, we sound good. That's what it's about, praising God together. Dancing and singing together, playing the drums and all these different instruments together. You see, David wrote songs about his hands for war and fighting and all of these types of things, talking about his enemies. But all in all, he was talking about praising God. Amen. Give God the praises due unto him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You can't shortchange God. No, you can't. You can't shortchange God. If you want to shortchange God, think about how you got up this morning. Think about if you have the ability to walk, to talk, to see, to hear, to smell. These are the things that the Most High God gave you. And we take it for granted sometimes. You wake up in the morning like, ah, yeah, everything good. No! 
God gave you another opportunity to walk, to see, to touch, to smell. You can't take that for granted, brothers and sisters. There's some people that wake up blind. That's right. They wake up blind. Like, yo, I, I can't see. Thank God for everything that you have, brothers and sisters. Amen. We left off last week with Shaul not following the instructions that the Creator gave him. Amen. What we got to take from that is this. When you become a leader, all you young men and young women, you become leaders, let me tell y'all something. You can't please everybody. But who you should be definitely trying to please yes. is the Creator. That's right. You can't please everybody, but God, you definitely have to please. You might not even please Ima and Abba all the time. However, you have to please God. That's right. That comes first. That's right. Before anything. Amen. Sometimes our, our, own, our own egos get in the way of things. We say, well, we want to do this for ourselves and do this for this reason. And it might not be what God asked of you. God asks you to keep his laws, commandments, and statutes. Do that first. Everything else is going to fall in place. That's right. But we're going to get into this history, brothers and sisters. I get hyped with this history. Not because he's a musician and I'm a musician, but because this is really, when I read this book, I see myself. I see. I see how we moved as a people. I see how we move individually. I see how we moved as kings and queens on this earth before they try to take us away from who we are. So we're going to get into this portion, the 16th chapter of the book of First Samuels. And we're going to try, I'm going to try and bring it to life for y'all, brothers and sisters. You children are going to love this because it's about David and Goliath. And we all know about David and Goliath. I watched Sports Center the other day, and it was a, 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 a team that was an underdog. They wasn't expecting to win. They said, it's a real live David and Goliath. I said, whoa, where they get that from? They've been in our book. They just didn't tell you who you were. So they know about this history, and they know that that David was us. So let's read on. We're in the first, first book of Shemuel. Beginning in the 16th chapter, the first verse, hallelujah. Hallelujah. And Yehoah said unto Shemuel, how long will I mourn for Shaul? How seeing long? that I have rejected him from being king over Israel. Right, because Shumuel, the prophet, he was still kind of hurt about what happened to Shaul. He's still a man. He was a prophet, but he was a man. So he's hurting. So the Most High said, how long are you going to mourn for him? I already rejected him. And when God rejects, then there's no coming back. No coming back. Let's read that. Fill my horn with oil and go. I'm sending you on a mission. Let's go. And I will send thee to Jesse the Bethlehemite. For I have provided me a king among his sons. Notice he says, I provided me a king right. from among his sons. You know why? Because the people chose Shaul. Right. The people wanted a king when God was already our king. That's right. So now he said, I provided me a king. I'm going to give you a king, somebody that I actually really want to be king. That I chose. Let's read. And Shemuel said, how can I go? If Shaul hear it, he will kill me. Right, because Shaul is still what? He's still the king. So he said, if he hear it, he's going to definitely kill me. So he, then God gives him an answer, because God has an answer for everything. Amen. And Yehoah said, take a heaven with thee, and say, I am come to sacrifice to Yehoah. That's it. Just say what I told you to say, and that's it. And call Jesse to the sacrifice, and I will tell thee what thou shalt do, and thou shalt anoint unto me him whom I have named unto thee. Right. And Shemuel did that which Jehovah spoke. He did that which Jehovah spoke. He just followed the instructions. Let's read. And he came to Bethlehem. And the elders of the city came to meet him trembling. Trembling. Come out peaceably. peaceably. Yeah, because they see him and they know whenever he come, he got a mission from the Most High. So they like, did you come in peace? Are you, they trembling like, uh, Shumuel, are you here for good reasons or, or what? And he answers them. And he said, peaceably. Peaceably, I'm I come am, in peace. I am come to sacrifice unto Yahweh. Sanctify yourselves and come with me to the sacrifice. Right. And he sanctified Jesse and his sons. And he called them to the sacrifice. He did what the Most High God told him to do. Point blank, period. Let's read. And it came to pass, when they were come, that he beheld Eliab, and he said, Surely, Surely Yehoah is anointed is before him. 
but Yehovah said unto Shemuel, All right. Look not on his countenance right. or on the height of his stature right. because I have rejected him. For, keep reading. For it is not as man seeth, for man, man looketh upon the, the outward, outward appearance, appearance. Yeah. but Yehovah looketh upon the Look heart. at that, brothers and sisters. He's seen his son Eliab. He said, oh, definitely got to be him. He's, he's big, he's tall, he's strong, he look good, it's his firstborn, it has to be him. God said, nah. Don't look at the outward. I look at the heart. I look at this right here. And I don't want us to confuse that. Uh -huh. I don't want us to confuse that either. Don't give me that, oh, God knows my heart when you break in Torah. I don't want none of that either. God knows the willing heart. God knows the righteous heart. And God knows that wicked heart too. You think it's coincidence that heart and mind is the same word in Hebrew? Uh -huh. Lev. He said it's deceitful above all things. Right. But God can't be deceived. That's right. Amen. We can deceive each other. Amen. Right. But God can't be deceived. Yeah. He said you can fool some people sometimes, but you can't fool all the people all the time. Right? That's what Bob Marley said. Right. <laughs> you can't. But... You know what I'm saying? The Most High God knows the heart. So he said, it's not that big guy, that big, strong man. No, it's not him. I'm looking at the heart. I'm looking at who's going to follow what I say. Yeah. Let's read. Then Jesse called Abinadad mm. and made him pass before Shemuel. Well, it got to be him. And he said, neither have Yehovah chosen this. No. Then Jesse made Shama to pass by. It gotta be him. And he said, neither have Yehoah chosen this. Now, what is going on? Most high, you told me to come here to speak to Yesha, Jesse, and pick, pick one of his sons. Now, I done seen seven boys. What's happening here? Read on. And Jesse made seven of his sons to pass before Shemuel. Mm -hmm. And Shemuel said unto Jesse, Yehoah have not chosen these. Mm -hmm. And Shemuel said unto Jesse, right. Are here all your children? And he said, There remaineth yet the youngest. Oh, so hold on, hold on, hold on. We were going through all this. Now I told you to bring all your sons to the sacrifice and bring all of them. You bring me the first seven. The most high is telling me, No, 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 no. And I said, Well, where's the where's the, the last boy? Oh, 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 you there's one more out there in the field, but he's, he's tending to the sheep. Well, go get him. Go get him. Let's read. And behold, he keepeth the sheep. Yeah. And Simbuel said unto Jesse, send and fetch him, for we will not sit down till he come hither. We're not even going to do anything until this one come, because obviously this is the one I've been waiting for all this time. Now, had he bought him the first time, we probably would have been wrapped up. <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah. Let's read. And he sent and brought him in. Right. Now he was ruddy. He said now he was ruddy. Yeah. The word they use admoni, so I'm assuming that he was a light-skinned young man. Yeah. He had to be reddish. That's usually what the word that we use for, for red. Mm -hmm. And then he says, continue. And with thou of beautiful eyes and goodly to look upon. He said he was a good-looking guy. Yeah. He said he had beautiful eyes. He was a handsome guy. But he was probably the smallest of the rest of them. Right. And he probably didn't look as you know, as tall as the rest of them. But that's not what God is looking at. God is looking at the heart. He said, he's a beautiful guy, but I'm looking at this right here. Eliab is right here. He's the firstborn. He's not, the, that's not the one. So he continued. And Yehoah said, arise, anoint him. For well, this, this is he. he. This is the one I've been waiting for. Right. The little one. Yeah, that guy. Yeah, him. Yeah. Little David. That's why we sing that song. Little, 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 little David. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. Yeah. <laughs> you put anything in the song, it's like to catch it. <laughs> I'm telling you. But this is what he's saying. He said, oh, this is him. So now let's read. Then Shemuel took the horn of oil right. and anointed him in the midst of his brothers. In the midst and, of his brothers. So now they getting tight probably. There's got to be some jealousy. You don't think Eliab was sitting there like... What? Yeah, what's going on? Yeah, nah. This little dude? Nah, come on. Abba, stop this. Come on, Abba, tell him don't do that. Don't, don't, 
don't put that oil. Don't don't put that oil there. That's too much oil. That's too much oil. <laughs> but listen, the the Most High said it, and nobody going to talk against the Prophet of the Creator. Let's go. And the spirit of Yehovah came mightily upon him. And the David spirit of Yehovah came forward. mightily upon him. From that day forward. Read on. So Shemuel rose up and went to Ramah. Woo! So now he said the spirit of Yehovah came mightily upon David. But David still stayed in his place. He still was tended to the sheep and doing what he had to do for his father and, and still humble. So now he said, and Shemuel left. He did what he had to do. He left. I'm going back to Ramah. Let's read. Verse 14. Now the spirit of Yehoah had departed from Shaul. Now let's not forget the part that Shaul is still king. Right. So now they said a spirit, an evil spirit, came upon Shaul. Let's read. And an evil spirit from Yehoah yeah. terrified him. It terrified him. Like he's going crazy. Like where is this coming from? I'm going crazy. Uh-huh. Pharaoh had the same issue. They said that Pharaoh, his heart was hardened. Can you imagine trying to say no to something and you keep saying yes? Yes. <laughs> Let my people go. Oh, no. He wanted to say yes. He having a difficult time because God hardened his heart. Shaul got an angry, evil spirit upon him like I don't know why I'm going crazy. That's not right. Today we call it bipolar schizophrenia. We don't know what it is. But that evil spirit come upon him. Let's read. And Shaul's servant said unto him, mm -hmm. Behold now, an evil spirit from God terrifieth thee. Right. Let our Lord now command thy servants that are before thee to seek out a man who is a skillful player oh on the harp. Goodness. And it shall be when the evil spirit from God cometh upon thee that he shall play with his hand and thou shalt be now well. Now we got to stop right here, brothers and sisters. Here we go. Here we go. That's right. Uh, Let's talk mic. about this for a second. <laughs> turn off his mic. Now it says that he had to seek out a skillful player, yeah. right? Okay. On the harp, yeah. which is music. Uh, guitar. Yeah. guitar. Let's say it's a harp. Guitar, whatever it is. He said he had to put, you know this saying, right? They say music soothes the what? Savage beast. Oh, start yelling and screaming. <laughs> You are not. <laughs> you keep going, Ooz. Keep going. Now watch me. Then he'll stop. He'll stop. Because that skillful playing, it soothes you. Listen, you ever see some old people angry? But then you see that, that's my jam. There it go. They done forgot what they was yelling about. They forgot you didn't do the dishes. They forgot you didn't take out the ash pile. They forgot all this stuff. Because that music is soothing you, brothers and sisters. Let's do it. So this is what Saul, Saul needed. I lost my So he said, listen, a skillful player on the harp. David knew how to play that harp. David was a musician. Good. <laughs> Let's read on. And Shaul said unto his servants, Provide me now a man that can play well and bring him to me. Provide me, go get me a musician then. Because they recognize there's an issue. He's bugging out. He's bugging out. So get me a musician then. You said that it's going to help me go get me a musician. So they go. He said what? Then answered one of the young men and said, uh -huh. Oh, I have seen a son of Jesse the Bethlehemite. What? That is skillful in playing. What? And a mighty man of valor, and a man of war, and, and prudent in the fears, and, and a comely, comely person, person, and, and your hope is with, with him. Listen to that resume. Wow. Listen to that resume. He's skillful in playing. A mighty man of valor, a man of war, prudent in affairs, and a comely person, and Yehovah is with him. Now that's the main part, brothers and sisters. God is with him. How could you go wrong? Bring him in the midst of me. He said, listen, he's a musician, and they knew about him from all over the place. He said, I seen the guy that played like that that you probably need. Now, I don't know about y'all, but I know a couple of musicians. 
I know of a musician that his name ring bells around these towns. Okay? <laughs> that when people come from South America, from the long distant lands, and they say, where is that drummer that plays so well? What? That's what they say. That's what they say. The brother said, ooze, ooze, read the text, ooze. <laughs> Read the text, man. I will not read the text. Read the text, man. <laughs> read the text, man. Come on, man. Hey, yo, Say, it was an yeah. honor to play with you, brother, in the drums and music. Say, wow. Listen, there's a thing that musicians do when they humble. Oh, you? They just do this. They go like this. Let's go like this. The point is, they knew about David from way over there. Just like I didn't say it. You said it, brother. I've been waiting for you. Thank you, Oos. Been waiting for you, brother. I ain't say it. I was waiting for you, my brother. It's waiting for you. That's the humble bar. Yes. <laughs> so they knew about King David. They knew about David at this time. He's not king yet, but they knew about David and the skills that he had on the on the musicianship. The same way that the people know about uh, what's his name, uh, Hendrix. All over the world. They know about Jimi Hendrix. They say he's the baddest. He was the baddest guitar player in the world, they said. You see these people, they want to do what he did. He played the with the Star Spangled Banner with his tongue? Yeah. Yeah. With his tongue. Yeah, with his teeth. Teeth, tongue, I don't care. Who can do that? With his mouth. Instead of his fingers. The boy was bad. He started out playing the guitar upside down because he was left-handed. Yeah, he started playing the guitar upside down because he was left-handed and they didn't make guitars like that. So he could play this way. So he played it the other way. Boy was bad. People know about him everywhere. People still trying to mimic Jimi Hendrix, his whole style. Same way they want to mimic Michael Jackson. Same way they want to mimic any of our people. That's right. Because our people are blessed. Yeah. Let's read. Verse 19, mm -hmm. wherefore Shaul sent messengers unto Jesse mm -hmm. and said, send me David thy son. We need the your son over here because King Saul is bugging out. And this spirit, nobody could soothe it but God. Let's read. And Jesse took an ass laden with bread and a bottle of wine and a kid and sent them by David his son unto Shaul. Now this is important. Why is it important? He's going to the king. He's being sent for from the king, by the king, but yet he's still bringing gifts uh -huh. for the king. That's respect, brothers and sisters. Mm -hmm. You don't go to somebody's house empty-handed. Exactly. You don't go to nobody's house empty-handed. Let you young men and young women know this. You going to meet a parent for the first time of your spouse? You better bring something. That's right. You bring, better bring something. Bring jury. <laughs> Spoken like a true father. He said, bring jewelry. That's nice. <laughs> that's nice. <laughs> bring jewelry and stuff. That's nice. Bring them something. You know what that means? That requires something called communication. That means you have to find out about what they like, what they know. You come to my father when he was alive, if you bought him some jazz music and some wine or some um, corn liquor, you was in good steps. You did a good first step, young man. Good first step. Now the brothers, you gotta worry about that. That's a whole different animal. But this is showing you that they have respect. He's sending him with gifts for the king and you called me. But this is how it was, let's read. And David came to Shaul and stood before him, mm. and he loved him greatly. And he loved him greatly. And he became his armor bearer. And Shaul sent to Jesse, saying, Let David, I pray thee, stand before me, right. for he hath found favor in my sight. And it came to pass when the evil spirit from God was upon Shaul, that David took the harp and played with his hand, so Shaul found relief. And it was well with him, and, and the, the evil spirit departed from Because that music soothes the savage beast, brothers and sisters. You need that music sometime. Listen, our praise service is all about music and praising God, because that's how we were. We are musical people. If I say, hey, yo, it went musical, man, I'm telling you. I'm just trying to tell you how my people roll. 
this is what we were. This is who we are. It's in our system. Uh -huh. And we give praise to God. That's why God gets so upset when we give our praise to another. Amen. Right. Because this is his praise. Right. We're supposed to be giving him his praise and only him. Come on now. Can you imagine Patti LaBelle singing Baruch Hashem? She'll tear it up. Wow. Tear it up. Amazing. She probably starts so high, we none of us will be able to follow her. <laughs> but she'll sing. Fantasia will kick off her shoes singing Baruch Hashem. But this is how we supposed to be giving God praise. So don't let nobody hold you down when it's time to praise God. That's right. You focus on yourself. I don't care if y'all think I jump funny or look funny and make funny faces when I'm praising God because I'm praising God. I don't care about you. I'm praising God. This is what it's about. You think who's care if he sound bad? No. Sing the song, Ooz. That's all I'm saying. We got to praise God. And like he said, when we pray and we sing together, we sound good. We make it sound like something. We make it sound like something. Let's get into the next portion, into the next chapter. Chapter 17, verse 1. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now the Philistines gathered together their armies right. to battle. And they were gathered together at Soko, which belongeth to Judah. Right. And pitched between Soko and Azekah mm -hmm. in Ephes Damim. And Shaul and the men of Israel were gathered together and pitched in the vale of Elah and set the battle in array against the Philistines. Right, now it's time to fight. We're ready to fight. They set the battle in array. Let's go. And the Philistines stood on the mountain on the one side and Israel on the mountain on the other side and, and there was, was a valley, valley between, between them. them. So now you got two mountains. One mountain over here, one mountain over here. The valley's in between. And now we looking at them, they looking at us. It's about to go down. Let's go. And there went up a champion from the camp of the Philistines named, named Goliath of Gath, whose height was six cubits and a span. Now, I did the mathematics on this. It said that six cubits, it said a cubit is equivalent to one foot, six inches. So if he's six cubits and a span, he's about nine feet tall and some change. Nine feet tall and some change. Let's say nine foot one just for purposes. So now, I bumped into Shaquille O'Neal a couple years ago. He's seven one. And I took a picture with him. I don't know nothing about Shaq, his personal life, nothing. <laughs> Let me make that a disclaimer. I don't know nothing about the man. I stood next to him, we took a picture. Now, I'm gonna have my brother Chief Ooze upload this picture so y'all could see how big Shaq was compared to me. And now Shaq is seven one, so Goliath is about two feet taller than Shaq. Wow! Yeah. If you could see this picture, Shaq is like a true giant, seven one, but now Goliath is standing nine foot tall, two feet taller than Shaq. Let's read. And he had a helmet of brass upon his head. A helmet of brass. And he was clad with a coat of mail. Right, and so now, the helmet of brass, he has a full helmet. And it's covering most of his face, on the sides, the back of his neck. The only part that's really open is this right here and this forehead part. The rest of it is covered. Now the coat of mail is the is like the breastplate. Right. It's covering right here. So now you're not even, it's like a, a vest. Yeah. You're not hitting this. Like you're not hitting this. It's like a bulletproof vest. You're not hitting none, right. none of my body, and you're not hitting me in my head. Right. Let's read. Parts. Yeah. And the weight of the coat was 5,000 shekels of brass. So now he's walking around with something that's 5,000 shekels of brass. So that's heavy. That's heavy. He's walking around like this and running and moving, carrying it on his chest with a helmet. And let's read on what else he got. And he had greaves of brass upon his legs. Right. And a javelin of brass between his shoulders. So he got these like boots, yeah. like 40 belows on, yeah. up to here, around his ankles and around his calves. And he's walking around like this, running, moving. Talking junk. Talking mess. Yeah. Let's read. And the shaft of his spear 
was like a weaver's beam. Mm -hmm. And his spear's head weighed 600 shekels of iron, and his shield bearer went before him. That's just the top of his spear. Just the part where it stabs you. 600 shekels of that coming at you full force. And then he has an armor bearer just for his shield alone. Somebody that just got to be like, here, Goliath. Here's your shield. So this, this guy is no joke. Nine foot tall, probably brolic, probably strong, and he's just walking around taunting the, the nation of Israel. That's right. And he stood and cried unto the armies of Israel and yeah. said unto them, why do ye come out and set your battle in array? What you here for? Y'all soft. Y'all soft. What you here for? Keep reading. I'm Am just going to interpret what he's saying. <laughs> Am I not a Philistine? Am I not the man around here? Yeah. Servants of Shaul? I don't represent with y'all. Choose you a man for you. One of y'all chunks come out here and fight. And let him come down to meet me. Come down here right now. If he be able to fight with me. If he can mess with these hands. <laughs> come on, read, y'all. I'm in it. I'm in it. Man, I want them to see this. <laughs> Get these hands. <laughs> Come on. Hey, kill me. Then we will be your servants. If y'all kill me, we'll serve y'all. But if I prevail against them and kill them, then shall ye be our servants and serve us. But when I kill that chump, y'all going to serve us. And the Philistine said, I do taunt the armies of Israel. Yeah, this day. I'm talking to y'all. Give me a man that we might fight together. Send somebody out here. And when Shaul and all Israel heard the words of the Philistines, they were dismayed and greatly afraid. They were scared. They were scared. You know why they were scared? Because they forgot that God is the one that fights That's the right. battles. Amen. That's right. You cannot lose when you have God on your side, brothers and sisters. That goes with anything in life. You are a servant of God. You go to an interview, and you look around that room, and nobody else got fringes on, nobody else look like you then you need to feel confident that that job is yours. Amen. Because you are the one that serves God. Put it in your prayer. Put it in your prayer. Listen, O Most High, I never served another God. I never bow down to another God. I know that you hear my prayer. I know you see this room full of all of these people that never praise your name. That's your selling point. You gotta sell yourself to God. Sure. When you trying to get God's attention, you think that he's talking about, we're gonna move on, we're gonna read on later, but he's gonna say something about this uncircumcised Philistine. You think he's saying that just to be a diss? He's saying that so God can hear that, I'm in your covenant, oh most high. I'm the one that's in your covenant, not him. So protect me. That's right. Let me get that job, oh most high. I'm in your covenant. Amen. That's why we pray to the God that answers prayers. Let's read. Verse 12. Now David was the son of that Ephrathite of Bethlehem of Yehuda, whose name was Jesse. Right. And he had eight sons. They just bringing the human back to speed on the recap. And the man was an old man in the days of Shaul, mm -hmm. stricken in years among men. Right. His father was an elder. And the three eldest sons of Jesse had gone after Shaul to the battle. Right. And the names of his three sons that went to the battle were Eliab, the firstborn, and the next unto him, Abinadab, and the third, Shammah. Mm -hmm. And David was the youngest. Right. And the three eldest followed Shaul. Right. Now David went to and fro from Shaul to feed his father's sheep in Bethlehem. And the Philistine drew near morning and evening and presented himself 40 days. So they had to listen to this trash talk for 40 days. He just kept taunting them. Come out and fight. One of y'all need to come down here and fight me. All day, every day. It said morning and evening presented himself for 40 days. They had to listen to this for 40 days. You know what else that means? They had to listen to it on Shabbat too. That's what that means. They had to listen to it on Shabbat too. And nobody thought and had the courage to say, you know what? We got to put an end to this. But we're going to see what's going to happen. Let's read. <laughs> and, Jesse, and Jesse said unto David his son, 
Take now for thy brethren an ephah of this parched corn. Right. And these ten loaves, and carry them quickly to the camp of thy brethren. Right. And bring these ten cheeses unto the captain of their thousand. Again, showing, thy, showing gratitude and, and thanks to, to the people that they're with. And to thy brethren, thou shalt bring greetings and take their pledge. Yeah, take their pledge. See what they got from, that, from being in that army. And bring it back here. But give them food and drink. Now Shaul and they and all the men of Israel are in the vale of Elah, fighting with the Philistines. Right. And David rose up early in the morning mm -hmm. and left the sheep with his keeper and took and went as Jesse had commanded him. Mm -hmm. And he came to the barricade as the host which was going forth to the fight shouted for the battle. Mm -hmm. And Israel and the Philistines put the battle in array, army against army. Right. And David left his baggage in the hand of the keeper of the baggage and ran to the army and came and greeted his brother. Right. And as he talked with them, behold, there came up the champion, the Philistine of Gath, Goliath by name, out of the ranks of the Philistines, and spoke according to these words. Right. And David heard them. And all the men of Israel, when they saw the man, fled from before him and were so afraid. And the men of Israel said, Have you seen this man that cometh up? Hmm. Surely the taunt of Israel as he come up. Do y'all see this guy? They scared. What are we going to do? But then listen to this. And it shall be that the man who killeth him, the king will enrich him with great riches and will give him his daughter and make him his father's house free in Israel. Now that's how you know they were really, really scared. Because now King Saul is offering them his daughter. And they still, you're going to be the son-in-law to the king. And no taxes. No taxes. You're going to be rich. You're going to have money. And you're going to have a princess. And they still didn't go fight. That's fair. That's fair. Let's read. And David spoke to the men that stood by him, saying, what shall be done to the man that killed this Philistine? Yeah, because now David is ear hustling like, what they say? <laughs> Hold on. You going to get a princess? Uh-huh. What else? And taketh away the taunt from Israel? For who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should have taunted the armies of the living God? Right, because he's like, who are you to be talking to us like that? Do you know who we are? Do you know who our forefathers were? Do you know what they did, what God did to Egypt? They forgot that. But David didn't. David is like, listen, I don't know what's wrong with y'all, but we need to get out there and fight. Let's go. And the people answered him after this manner, saying, So shall it be done to the man that killeth him. And Eliab, his eldest brother, heard when he spoke unto the men. And Eliab's anger was kindled against David, and he said, What art thou come down Yeah, here? because he's still big brother. So now his little brother's over here trying to ear hustle, like, Yo, what they said he going to get? Oh, y'all need to start acting like chumps. This uncircumcised Philistine around here, and then big brother come over. What you doing down here? Hey. Continue. And with whom has thou left a few sheep in the wilderness? Now, why are you bringing up old stuff, Eli? <laughs> now, you know I'm here because I, I, Abba told me to come. He probably smacked them around a couple of times. Why are you, why are you hitting me? Why are you yelling at me? I know thy presumptuousness and the naughtiness of thy heart. The naughtiness of thy heart. For thou art come down that thou mightest see the battle. And David said, And David said, What have I now done? Was it not but a word? Am I just talking, Eliab? Why you mad at me for? You the one that don't want to fight, Goliath. You the one that's scared, not me. You scared, big bro. I'll take you home if you're scared. <laughs> I'll take you home if you're scared. What, Eliab, you want to go watch the sheep? Let me fight this guy. But listen, for David to have that spirit, he had to been sparring. He had to be, he, was, he didn't just go out there and say, oh, I know how to fight. He been fighting. First of all, when you the youngest, and I'm talking from experience, when you the youngest, you better know how to fight because the older brother's going to be hitting you a lot. They're going to try and toughen you up. That's what they call it, toughening you up. And I was just going to stand and be like, get tough. <laughs> That's what happens. The older brothers, the older siblings always hit you and they do things to you. Toughen you up. Toughen you up. It happens. Toughen up. So David has already had his experiences. Let's read. 
and he turned away from him toward another. Yeah, he, he's talking to Eliab, and he, Eliab not listening to him, so he goes to somebody else. Man, y'all gonna let this Philistine bother y'all? Let's read. And spoke after the same manner. The same and the thing. And people answered him after the former manner. And when the words were heard which David spoke, they rehearsed them before Shaul. Yeah, because they all scared. Him. So now they like, oh, David, you, you talking like that, huh? Oh, you think you're going, all right, but we're going to go. We, well, then tell, tell King Saul I'll do it. You serious? We're going to, I told tell him right now. Go ahead, go tell him then. Tell him. Tell him what I said and bring it back. David walking around like, yeah, go ahead, tell him. So now they go and tell Shaul. And David said to Shaul, let no man's fail within him. Let no man's heart fail within him. Right. Thy servant will go and fight with this Philistine. Right. And Shaul said unto David, Whoa, whoa, whoa. Thou art not Pump able your to go against man. this Philistine to fight with him? Yeah. Thou art but a youth. You're just and a he's a man. man of war from his he youth. He said Goliath been fighting since he was a kid. You just a little guy. What makes you think you want to fight him? But now listen to this answer. And David said unto Shaul, Thy servant kept his father's sheep. Not an easy task. And when there came a lion or a bear, and it took a lamb out of the flock, I went after him. I went and after I him. Smote him. And smote and him. And delivered it out of his mouth. And when he and when he arose against me, I, I caught, caught him by, by his beard and smote him and slew him. He's saying, I killed the lion, grabbed the lion by the beard, and killed him because he tried to mess up the sheep. The tried to steal the sheep, the king of the jungle. I took him by the beard. Yeah. <laughs> huh? And smote him. This ain't no joke. I ain't no chump, Shaul. I ain't no chump. Let me fight him. I fought a bear and I killed him. I, I fought a lion and I killed him. You gotta see how he's moving, man. This is, this is, he got, I'm, I did this. Let me fight him. Let's read. Thy servant smote, the, smote both the lion My and regiment. the bear, and this the uncircumcised Philistine shall be as one of them, them seeing he has taunted the armies of the living God. That's a prayer, brothers and sisters. That's a prayer right there. He said, listen, this guy is an uncircumcised Philistine. That's him reminding God, God, I'm in your covenant. I'm in your covenant. Don't let me fall down by this uncircumcised piece of Zoak. Huh? Go to Psalm 144 real quick and see what David start off and say. Just the first couple of verses. 144? 144. Psalm 144, verse 1. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Blessed be Yehovah, my rock, who traineth my hands for war. Who traineth my, my hands for battle. war and my fingers for battle. That's King David's psalm right there. You think he's talking about? He ain't talking about no God that can't deliver him out of the hand of a Philistine. He delivered me out of the hand of a lion. You know, I, I, I'm sometimes at awe with, like, the circus and things like that. But then I remember that the Most High God said he gave us dominion over animals. So I'm not really that perplexed that they can do those tricks anymore. When you read the book, it makes you like, eh, we're supposed to do that. But when you really think about an animal in its natural habitat, you don't really want to be fighting with no lion. You don't really want to be fighting with no bear. They strong. But this is what he did. With a stab, probably, if that. He said he grabbed him by the beard, though. Probably snapped his neck. So he's not light. He's not no weakling. He's strong. It's important for us to stay strong. It's important for us to stay in good shape. Work out, brothers. Stay in shape, sisters. You never know when you're going to have to put your hands on somebody. I'm serious. You got to put your hands on people sometimes. You got to hit that treadmill. Huh? Walk. Run. Hit them weights, brothers. Get out there and exercise. Because this time is now, brothers and sisters. Let's read. Let's go back to the portion. Verse 37. Mm -hmm. And David said, Yeho, that delivered me out of the paw of the lion right. and out of the paw of the bear. He will deliver me out of the hands of this Philistine. And Shaul said unto David, Go, and Yehoah shall be with you. You know what's funny? King Shaul didn't need much convincing. <laughs> Not much. <laughs> he didn't need too much convincing. He said, listen, we done been hearing this for 40 days. You beat up a lion, and a, you killed the lion and the bear? Yeah, and God, and, and God delivered you. 
Go. Damn shit. And may that same God be with you. Yeah, and, and may God be with you, my brother. And if he don't come back, oh well. You know what I'm saying? It is what it is. It is, what it is. But David had the confidence of the creator on him. He knew he was going to win. He knew he was going to win. And I'm going to prove he knew he was going to win because look at the next couple of verses. Let's read. And Shaul clad David with his apparel. Mm -hmm. And he put on a helmet of brass upon his head. Yeah. And he clad him with a coat of mail. Yeah, he doing and the same thing that Goliath got. Now he putting this stuff on, Shaul's stuff on. Go ahead. And David girded his sword upon his apparel. Right, so and he essayed to go. Right. But he had not tried it. He and said, David, I can't use this. Go ahead. And David said unto Shaul, I cannot go with these. I can't go but with I have these. I not tried them. I don't know how to fight like this. I didn't fight with this stuff on when I fought the lion. I didn't fight with this stuff on when I killed the bear. So I can't really, this coat of mail and sword, I can't, I can't maneuver. Nah, I'm taking this off. Let's read. And Dawi and David put them off him. Yeah, take this off. And he took his staff in his hand. A staff? And he chose him five smooth stones. Five smooth brook. stones. And he put them in the shepherd's bag, which he had even in his script. In his script. And his sling that was in his hand, and he drew near unto the Philip. Now, I was going to come in full garb today. I was going to wear me a sash. I was going to put me a little bag right here. And I was going to put five stones in it. And I was just going to start slinging them around at y'all. Just bang, one time. Whoever went down, that's just what it was. You know? But I chose different. I chose to not do that. I'm just going to paint the picture for y'all. <laughs> so, okay, not do it. <laughs> so, he took five smooth stones. This man had to be practicing. His aim had to be impeccable. That's right. Because if you go out to war and you only got five things, you're asking for it if you miss them five things. You only got a staff and five stones. Now here we are, we carry about 16 and got another 30 on our pouch. You're talking about five compared to 46. That's a big difference. So he was accurate. He was precise with his aim. He probably scored 100 at the range. <laughs> All right? Let's read. And the Philistine came nearer and nearer unto David. Right. And the man that bore the shield went before him. Yeah, now he got the, the armor bearer of Goliath going before him, carrying his shield, and then Goliath walking behind him. And when the Philistine looked about and saw David, he disdained him, for he was but a youth and ruddy, and, ruddy, and, and with the all of a fair cat. He's saying he's a pretty boy. What you here for? Pretty Ricky. Yeah. Yeah, light skin Ray. What you doing here? You came to fight me? Disrespect. You came to fight me? Can I stand up? Stand up. Look at this. Look how little he is. He coming up to me. You want some of this? <laughs> Look how small he is. Look how small he is. That's how he's looking at him. You coming to me? You say he's small. He's ruddy and he's a pretty boy. What you want? Let's read. And the Philistine said unto David, Am I a dog? Am I a dog that, that you come, come to me with, with staves? A little stick? Who you think? You gonna hit me like this? Get, get, get. You think I'm gonna be like, get, 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 Goliath? No! Go ahead. And the Philistine cursed David by his God. He cursed him by his God. That little fish I told y'all about a couple of weeks ago. That when the fish fell, head fell on, they said, Daggone. Daggone. Get out of here. Let's and the read. Philistine said to David, Come to me, yeah. and I will give thy flesh unto the fowls of the air and to the beasts of the field. Yeah, what did showing them say to, to Bruce Leroy? Yeah, come here, boy. Playtime's over. <laughs> that's what he said. Yeah, boy, playtime's over. That's what Bruce, that's what showing up said to Bruce Leroy. Yeah, when he had the glow, remember? Yeah, yeah, boy. Playtime's over. Let's read. Then David said to the Philistines, Thou comest to me with a sword and a spear and with a javelin. Yeah, you but came to me with all this stuff, but I'm coming with but what? I come to thee in the name of the Yehovah. In the name of Yehovah. The God of the armies of Yisrael. The God of the armies of Israel. Who thou hast taunted. You can't lose now. You can't lose. 
Let's read. This day will you hover for thee into my hand, That's and I right. will smite thee, right. and I will take thy head from off thee, and I will give the, thy carcass to the host of the Philistines this day, unto, unto the fowls of the air, and to the wild beasts of the earth, that all the earth may know that there is a God in Yisrael. Because you done forgot. Y'all must have forgot. Ain't that what Roy Jones said? Y'all must have forgot. I done knocked people out. He said, y'all going to remember this. He said, you going to taunt the armies of Israel? He said, I'm going to. See, David was talking trash back. He said, you ain't going to just trump me. You know how we talk when we talking trash to each other? We can't go a day without not talking trash to each other. He said, nah, you going to remember this, day. Let's go. And all this assembly may know that Yehoah saveth not with sword and spear, for the, the battle, battle is Yehoah's, and he will give you into our hands. Yeah, head. all y'all back there behind that mountain, y'all gonna see what I'm gonna do to this big chunk. Uh, yeah, big on circumcision. Yeah, <laughs> that's what he said. Let's read. And it came to pass when the Philistine arose, right, and came and drew nigh to meet David, and David hastened and ran to Listen, the army to meet the David Philistine. David didn't just stand there. This ain't no sitting in no pocket. No, I'm coming straight at you. He said David ran to meet him. I'm coming to meet you. I wish I had more room out to show y'all. I'm telling y'all. I'm into this right now. Let's read. And David put his hand in his back. He put his hand in his back. He's running. And took thence a stone. Ooh, I got me a stone. I'm slinging it. And smote the Philistine on his forehead. Oh, man. I want to sling my chain around. And he fell upon his face to the earth. Hold on. Hold on. Up. I'm going to explain this thing, chain man, bing somebody in that head so I can make, make an example out of somebody in there. Huh? That's what he said. Took a stone, a smooth stone, and ran and hit him. Now remember I told y'all he was covered everywhere. He got cold and male brass everywhere. So the most high guided that stone. Huh? He guided that stone because the stone hit him right here in the forehead. A smooth stone. A smooth stone cut right through the head. Pierced his head. Right here in the forehead it says. Let's read. So David prevailed over the Philistines. Prevailed. With a sling and a stone. And smote the Philistine and slew him. And slew but him. there was no sword in the hand yeah, of David. Because now he's just right now. He's done. He's down. But we want, we want a mortal combat. Finish him. Finish him. <laughs> yeah. Let's finish him. Let's read. And David ran. And stood over the Philistine and took his sword and drew it out of the sheath thereof. Hey, and where's his own him? Where's Goliath's shield bearer? <laughs> Y'all forgot about that guy? That's a good he, question. He done bounced. <laughs> he done bounced. He left. Uh, he dropped the shield. Yeah, he dropped the shield. I'm out. This is your fight. <laughs> remember, remember when Debo knocked out Ray? <laughs> Boom! And then his father was like, He said, Which one, old man? <laughs> Which one, old man? Nothing. <laughs> That's what he said. Nothing. Armor beard has left the shield. Yeah, Goliath. This is your fight now. He done. Let's read. And cut off his head therewith. Cut off his head with that sword. And he was strong enough to lift up Goliath's sword drop and it drop it on his neck. And when the Philistines saw that their mighty man was dead, wow. they fled. Because now they scared. They scared. Oh my goodness. Goliath went down. All their chips was on Goliath. All their chips was on Goliath. Now their heart is gone. Let's read. And the men of Israel and of Yehuda arose mm -hmm. and shouted, and they pursued after the Philistines until thou come to God, right. and to the gates of Ekron. Mm -hmm. And the wounded of the Philistines fell down by the way to Sha'arim, even unto Gath and unto Ekron. And the children of Israel returned from chasing after the Philistines, right. and they spoiled their camp. Yeah, it took they, everything. That's right. And David took the head of the Philistine and brought it to Jerusalem, and he put on his armor in his tent. Yeah, he put the armor in his tent, took, took the lie of armor, took it, took it and put it in his tent, and still carrying that head around. Like this. Yeah, this Goliath. Yeah, I, yeah, I did this yesterday. <laughs> oh, you ain't hear about it? Oh, yeah. Yeah, well, what happened was, you know, he ran up on me and everything, you know what I'm saying? So I took, a, I just took a stone, you know what I'm saying? It was, it was easy, you know what I mean? It was real light. I just, you know, I just swung it one time once. One, nah, just one time, one, one time. time. One time, one time. Nah, 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 ask. Go, go 
and go ask them over about what happened. Now they watched. You wasn't there. I don't know how you ain't hear that, my brother. I don't know. You better, you better look at Philistine number twelve news or something. You know what I'm saying? Because you missed that. But um, yeah, man, it was nothing. Piece of work. You know, I'm just gonna carry this. I'm just going I'm just gonna hold this head for Saul. You know what I'm saying? Me and Saul like this. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> then don't worry about it. Let's read. And when Shaul saw David go forth against the Philistine, he said unto Abner, the captain of the host, Abner, whose son is this you? Now, isn't this strange? Right. Shaul is like, who is this? Right. What you mean? You sent him to the battle. <laughs> he played for you. you he played music for you. Now, how you going to forget the musician? Come on, man. But he forgot. But that's that, that mind. Let's read. And Abner said, As thy soul liveth, O king, I cannot tell. <laughs> and the king said, Inquire thou whose son this yeah, stripling is. Find out who this is. And as David returned from the slaughter of the Philistine, Abner took him and brought him before Shaul with the head of the Philistine in his hand. Yeah, Shalom King, how are you? Still got this, I still got Goliath's head. Yeah, remember I, I chopped it off yesterday? No, it's not ringing the bell? Okay, <laughs> let's read. And Shaul said unto him, Whose son art thou, young man? And David answered, I am the son of thy servant Jesse, the Bethlehemite. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Brothers and sisters, I had a bowl. I pray that you got something out of it. The most high God is good to us, brothers and sisters. Take pride in your history. This is our history. Next week it gets even better with Jonathan and David's relationship. Listen, brothers and sisters, read along. Follow along. If you can't make it out, still read and continue to, to just, just learn about your history. It's a beautiful history, brothers and sisters. And most importantly, it's our history. Blessed be the name of the Most High God forever and ever. Hallelujah. 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 Maybe see that we got a couple of more minutes before we close out.